The Battle of Cape St. George was a naval battle of the Pacific Campaign of World War II fought on 25 November 1943, between Cape St. George, New Ireland, and Booker Island. It was the last engagement of surface ships in the Solomon Islands campaign. During the engagement, a force of five U.S. Navy destroyers led by Captain Arlie Burke intercepted a similar-sized Japanese force that was withdrawing from Booker towards Rabaul, having landed reinforcements on the island. In the ensuing fight, three Japanese destroyers were sunk and one was damaged, with no losses amongst the U.S. forces. Chapter 1 Background The Americans had landed troops from the 3rd Marine Division around Torokina on Bougainville on 1 November 1943. Judging the landings a ruse, and that the real Allied objective was the airfields around Booker to the north of Bougainville, the Japanese delayed launching a concerted counter-attack on Cape Torokina, and instead determined to reinforce Booker. As a result, 920 Japanese army troops were embarked on the destroyers Amagiri, Yugiri and Uzuki under the command of Captain Katsumori Yamashiro and were sent to reinforce the garrison, escorted by the destroyers Onami, and make an army under the command of Captain Kyoto Kagawa. The convoy was spotted by reconnaissance aircraft, and the United States Navy sent Captain Ali Burke's destroyer Squadron 23, composed of destroyer Division 45, under Burke's direct command, and destroyer Division 46, under Commander Bernard Austin to intercept it. Meanwhile, nine PT boats under Commander Henry Farrow moved into the Booker Passage to engage the Japanese if Burke's force was unable to make contact. Chapter 2 – Battle The Japanese battle plan divided their force into two columns, with the three transport destroyers trailing the two escort destroyers. The American battle plan also divided their force into two columns using tactics devised by Burke and first employed successfully by Commander Frederick Moosebrugger at the Battle of Vela Gulf the previous August. One column would make a torpedo attack while the other took up a supporting position ready to open gunfire as soon as the first column's torpedo attack struck home. The Japanese destroyers landed the 920 troops and supplies and embarked 700 Navy aviation personnel being withdrawn as Allied bombing had rendered the airfield at Booker non operational. The Japanese force was returning to Rabaul when Faro's PT boats spotted four of the Japanese ships on their radar just after midnight, however, the PT boats mistook the Japanese vessels for friendly forces and hove to further ashore. Two of the Japanese ships subsequently attacked the PT boats, firing on them and attempting to ram PT-318. They failed to score any hits, though, while one of the PT boats, PT-64, fired a torpedo which missed its target. Afterwards, the Japanese destroyers steamed west towards Cape St. George. Around 1.41, Kagawa's two screening destroyers were picked up by radar by Burke's destroyers, which had moved into position between Cape St. George and Booker, with Dyson making contact first. Poor visibility prevented the Japanese from spotting the American ships in turn. Burke elected to use his own division for the torpedo attack. Superior radar allowed the American ships to approach within 5,500 yards and launch their torpedoes at about 1.55 before the Japanese sighted them. Onami was hit by several torpedoes and sank immediately with all hands, including Kagawa. Makinami was hit by one torpedo, and disabled. Burke's force established radar contact with the rest of the Japanese force at 13,000 yards soon after launching their torpedoes and turned to pursue. Yamashiro's three transport destroyers fled north, pursued by Burke's division, while Converse and Spence from Austin's division finished off the disabled Makin army with torpedoes and gunfire. During the chase, torpedoes fired by Japanese destroyers exploded in the wakes of the American destroyers. Burke's three destroyers steadily gained on the three heavily laden Japanese destroyers, opening fire around 2.22, scoring several hits. Uzuki was hit by one dud shell and escaped without significant damage. Amagiri escaped untouched. Around 2.25, the Japanese ships split up and fled in different directions. 
Burke chose to pursue Yuguri with his entire force and sank her at about 328 after a fierce engagement. Chapter 3, Aftermath By 345, Burke's and Austin's divisions had linked up, continuing to push north to pursue the withdrawing Japanese ships. Burke subsequently called off the attempt at 404, low on fuel and ammunition, and needing to withdraw before daylight, when Japanese aircraft would likely begin operations to search for them. In the event, the only aircraft the US ships spotted once daylight came were friendly Air Sol's P-38 Lightnings. The battle represented a significant victory for the Americans and was later described as an almost perfect action and Burke was awarded a Navy Cross. It was the final surface engagement of the Solomon Islands campaign, and the last such action in the wider Pacific for nine months. Although the Japanese were able to land their troops and withdraw their supporting personnel, they lost three destroyers, sunk and one damaged, without inflicting any losses on the American force. Amongst the Japanese crews, a total of 647 were killed. A total of 278 survivors were rescued from Yuguri by the submarine I-177. Chapter 4, Namesake The U.S. Navy Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruiser USS Cape St. George, in commission since 1993, was named for this battle.